A big thank you to Nebula for sponsoring this video. Watch until the end to see how you can help make videos like this possible in the future. The Series X and the Series S are great consoles, but the fact that I would need to buy a lot of my games again just to enjoy them from the comfort of my couch leaves a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I already own the game. Well, I'm not gonna buy it again. Look at that. So instead of paying $60 to play Elden Ring from my living room, I instead paid $463 and built this, a better Xbox Series X. Now I can enjoy all of my favorite games, Xbox, PC, and things outside of that range from the comfort of my couch without succumbing to buying any of my games again or without succumbing to cloud gaming. Now let's get one thing out of the way. Consoles this generation are absolute monsters. Once you account for the computing power of an Xbox Series X and PS5, you're looking at the computing performance of an ultra high-end gaming PC from 2019. Even today, the processor and video card alone would cost you about the price of an entire Xbox Series X. And if we take size into account, it would need to fit inside of a small microwave. Obviously, I'm fighting a losing battle here. Once budgeted, this started to feel a lot like a pipe dream. I needed a $300 RTX 2080 level video card and an $80 Ryzen 7 processor and essentially a free small form factor case to fit all of this in, but I kept to it. And after making my shopping list, I went to the one site I knew hasn't let me down, Facebook. You will definitely find some interesting products on Facebook Marketplace with very adventurous prices, some a little too adventurous. Now, ironically, I didn't score any of my components on Facebook, but it did lead me to a bunch of other great deals. From Amazon, I picked up a 512 gig SSD for $27 and a 600 watt power supply for $31. From eBay, I picked up 16 gigs of RAM for $38. And from Reddit hardware swap, I picked up an AM4 motherboard for just $29. Now sadly, Amazon did end up losing my power supply in the mail, so we have to work with this power supply instead. It'll work just fine, but I'm still counting $31 because that wasn't my fault. So now that I got the lower hanging fruit out of the way, I could focus on the tougher components, the processor, the video card, and the case. Originally, I opted for a custom 3D printed case, but that turned out to be a pretty bad idea. Even if I could find a design that supports a micro ATX motherboard and a standard ATX power supply, which is really difficult by the way, this is after months of research, I would still need to spend almost $50 on miscellaneous parts just to put the PC together. I'd rather take my chances and find a decent small form factor case on sale instead. It will be larger than a small microwave, unfortunately, but that's just the price we're gonna have to pay. I was pretty burnt out on chasing a case, so I pivoted my efforts to the video card and the processor. So many video cards slipped through my fingers, and I'm pretty sure a few of them were scams. Even my brother would have higher than a two-star rating on Facebook Marketplace, and he barely knows what a video card is. That's the this, card that plays video. The CPU wasn't much better either. Tons of deals dried up right before I was ready to purchase. Now it seemed like all hope was lost until my hard work finally paid off and I found a few gems. Firstly, the RTX 3060 Ti for $240 shipped on Reddit's hardware swap. Now this is 10% slower than the 3070, but it's much cheaper. And on top of that, we found our CPU as well, which is the Ryzen 5 5500. Now this performs very similarly to a 3700X in games, and we got it for $59 at Micro Center. So it was originally listed for $84 open box, hence this yellow sticker, but I got a $25 off coupon on a sale that they were running and brought it down to $59, a dollar under the budget that we set for the CPU. And for the final gem, drum roll please. We found our case. It's the Cooler Master NR200, and we got it for $55 after rebate. And it supports a micro ATX motherboard and a full ATX power supply with an add-on. And it'll support our video card too. And it's small form factor. And it looks good. It's just overall wonderful. So I'm really excited that we got it at a price that makes sense. Whew, this computer's coming along. Let's just hope everything fits in the case. 
Man, I couldn't have chosen a poorer choice of words. Little did I know that nothing would fit inside of that case because of the motherboard. <sighs> the motherboard doesn't fit. So it does physically fit inside of the case, but where the standoffs are set, it's not going to have enough clearance. It's gonna jut out at the bottom. We can't use it. <laughs> and we'd have to literally saw off the bottom of the motherboard. Thankfully, I could still return the NR200 and I picked up the SAMA IM01 case instead. It's slightly larger than the NR200, but it natively supports my motherboard form factor and my power supply and my video card. So overall, we save a little money because we don't have to do any modifications. So now we're good to go. So let's recap everything. Here is the Xbox Series X and it'll cost you about $500 brand new. If you want to build a nearly identical PC, brand new, this is what you would expect or shoot for and it'll cost you a little over $800. And here are the specs of my Xbox PC and it runs me at about $460. In my opinion, it's not bad. And we still have some money left over that we can put into an Xbox controller. The final build turned out looking phenomenal and it fits the aesthetic of the living room. I added some white cable extensions and then a custom GPU backplate, as well as some vinyl wrap just to tie in everything together. Now, one of the best parts of console gaming is it's so simple. You turn it on, you sit on your couch, everything works. You can navigate with your controller. And so I really wanna highlight the software usage here. To avoid using a mouse and keyboard to start games, navigate things, I used a modded version of Steam Big Picture Mode. The computer opens big picture mode on startup and I can access all of my games, including my non-Steam games, using my Xbox controller. And if I ever need to make changes or add a game, I can just remote into the computer from my laptop or my personal computer and download and install anything that way. It's pretty awesome and I'm very happy with how it turned out. If you guys want, download links to the tutorials I use and the software I used, I'll put them in the description. Now time for performance. Comparing a PC to a console is a little difficult because you don't have the same granularity in changing video settings or you don't have access to the video settings at all on a console. But the people at Digital Foundry have solved that problem. They have several deep dive videos that detail the difference in settings between an Xbox and a PC and how to match the PC settings to the Xbox as much as possible. So shout out to them. Thank you guys so much. You have made my life so much easier. Check them out when you have the chance. Firstly, we have Elden Ring, and I couldn't get exact settings here, but I decided to play this at high, 1440p, and it was great. I was at 60 FPS pretty much the entire time, and I didn't feel any hiccups, any jitters, everything was smooth, and the performance was definitely not getting in the way of any of my gameplay. So overall, I would say, that's positive. Next up, we have Wind Waker, a GameCube game that I was emulating through Dolphin. And my Dolphin settings were pretty high graphically. In DirectX 12 at 14 times the native resolution, I was getting really good performance locked at 30 FPS. Now, this isn't a direct comparison to the Xbox, obviously, and Wind Waker is a lighter Dolphin title, but the higher, essentially maxed out settings give me a lot of comfort that if I do play a tougher game, I wouldn't have any problems. And now we get into Xbox comparison territory. And first we have Halo Infinite. With quality mode, the Xbox targets 4K 60 FPS in this game. So if I stayed at 60 FPS with similar settings, then I was very much good to go. And we definitely achieved that and a little bit more. I kept my FPS uncapped and I was hitting 70 to 80 FPS in a multiplayer arena match. I definitely suck at the game, <laughs> but at least I'm sucking at 60 FPS or better. I don't think that makes it any better actually. <laughs> and the second game I tested was Forza Horizon 5. In quality mode, the Xbox targets 4K 30 FPS. So again, if I stayed above 30 FPS with similar settings, I was good to go. 
and we were in the 45 to even 50 range in some instances. This was with ray tracing enabled as well in Forza's opening scene. So we were definitely matching the Xbox at least, and in both Halo Infinite and Forza, we were actually beating it. Now my biggest concern actually wasn't performance. I had a good feeling the 3060 Ti and Ryzen 5 combo would work really well. My biggest concern was thermals. I did have five fans in my case, if I include my power supply fan, but I was still nervous because it was such a tight enclosure. CPU temperatures were fine across the board, but the GPU was getting a little warm. In Forza, I was hitting about 85 degrees Celsius at peak, and that was with only about maybe 10, 15 minutes of gameplay. It's technically okay, but slightly warmer than I wanted. So I ended up undervolting the 3060 Ti. And not only did performance increase a little bit, but temperature dropped about five degrees to 80. Now it's not a huge win, but I'm way more comfortable with 80 degrees than 85. So it worked for me. All in all, I am very happy with this console PC. I think it looks great. It gives me great value and has way more versatility than using a standard console. I can enjoy the benefits of console gaming with much wider libraries in the comfort of my living room. Now, would I recommend this to someone else? Console PCs, for sure. My one caveat is don't constrain yourself to such strict parameters and lofty requirements like I did. Rather, choose a few games that you really want to play, set a budget, and go build. And if you guys thought that this project was cool, then you might be interested in how budget computers even came to be in the first place. Well, then I recommend checking out Low Spec Gamer's video on the first low spec budget processor, along with his bonus video, which details Bill Gates' journey with the novel chip that explains how a few engineers revolutionized budget computing in the 70s and the 80s. Or if you want an exclusive first look at my upcoming videos, like this PC that ChatGPT recommended me, then join Nebula, a creator-owned streaming platform. Nebula offers early access to my videos, like this one, exclusive content like this Cowboy Bebop analysis by Matt from Extra Credits, and over two dozen podcasts. And when you join, the access isn't just for my content, but also for a ton of other creators like Not Just Bikes, Legal Eagle, and low spec gamer to name a few. And if you sign up using my link, go.nebula.tv slash oztalkshw, it'll be in the description as well, then you get access to Nebula classes. These are courses led and taught by some of your favorite creators. And my personal favorite right now is the Business 101 class by Thomas Frank. And it details how to bookkeep, organize, set up your business if you're a creator. And it's been a huge help and resource for myself. And with an annual subscription to Nebula, it costs less than a coffee a month. It's about $2.50 USD. Plus you also further support some of your favorite creators. So please consider joining it if you haven't already. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm so glad that I was able to get this uploaded. It took forever to make. I've been working on it since September. So this is honestly a really good feeling to press the stop record button and then finish this video. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace.